let's talk a little bit about shuffling cards. What I've got here is a normal deck of bicycle brand playing cards from the U.S. Guard Company. As far as I'm concerned, they're about the best cards you can buy for the price, which is cheap if you buy them in bulk somewhere. Anyway, you can get them for about a dollar or a dollar and a half a pack if you go to a Cosmo Demonic Mega Store and uh, buy them in a 12 pack. Anyway, uh, these are poker sized. And the reason they're called poker sized is normally when you play poker, or at least in the old days, five card stud was the typical game and you'd have to hold five cards in your hand. It's very comfortable and easy to see five cards like when you spread them out like this. But then if you played bridge, in which case you'd have to hold 13 cards, and here's 13 cards, you'd have to hold them out. It's harder to fan them all out so you can see them. That's why they invented bridge size playing cards. They're about a quarter inch narrower. These are also bicycle brand from the US Playing Card Company, but you'll see they're just about a quarter inch narrower. And that means when you hold 13 of them, five, another five, there's 13. When you spread them out, it's easier to see these because they're narrower. If this was a um, poker deck, you'd have to spread them out that much more. So it's just more convenient for bridge players. What does this mean to us? Well, it's a good thing because some of you who may be practicing this at home or learning this may have littler hands than my paws. So when I shuffle with a deck of cards like this, you may need a bridge size deck which is a little bit narrower and easier to handle and I'll show you exactly how to do these shuffles in a moment. Now this one is called, well let's start, this this shuffle is called the overhand shuffle because it's like overhand pitching, right? You're, you're taking one hand and moving it above the other and the way to start it is hold out if you're a, a righty, if you're a lefty just re, uh, turn these instructions around if you're a righty, bend your fingers, hold your left hand flat, out, palm out, bend your fingers in a little bit and rest the deck in there. Then put your thumb on top. That's easy enough. Now with your right hand, grab a little more than half the deck. The right hand, the fingers are on the outside, the thumb is on the inside. Grab a little more than half, pull it up, and let this part fall onto your fingers. Then drop some from the right hand. You're dropping from the top, you know, not, not from the face of the cards. Drop some and pull up. Drop some more, pull up. Drop some more and pull up until you throw off. It's called the throw off at the end. So this is called the run. We're running cards and that's the throw off. The final run is the throw off. So run the cards and throw off. Simple enough. It's not the most efficient shuffle in the world. It's good enough for our purposes. Whoops. It's good enough for our purposes, but we'll learn this shuffle a little bit later. Okay? Right now, let's just practice what they call the overhand shuffle. Okay, and keep doing it till you can get really good at it. You can do it as many times as you want. In other words, you don't have to do it just three times. You can do it one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, as, as many drop-offs as you like, as many runs as you like until you throw off. Now, some people will do it this way. That's because <laughs> they're not thinking. When you're shuffling cards, you're supposed to be mixing the cards so nobody knows where any are. Well, now I know where four cards are, approximately, in the deck. I know where the seven of spades is. Seven of spades is near the top now. The three of clubs is near the middle. And the king of spades is on the bottom. 
So if I was playing cards and I needed a king, you know, and if I pulled a hand and I needed a king of spades to fill an inside straight, I'd know not to bet on it. Well, we're not betting and we're not playing cards here. But those are one of the things when you have to keep in mind when you're shuffling cards. What are you trying to accomplish? You're trying to mix them and you're trying to keep them all hidden from everybody. So nobody knows where anything is. So that's the overhand shuffle. Let's try it with the left you know, it's always good to try anything you're learning with your opposite hand. Now, what happens if you've got really small hands or you're a young child and it's hard to get your hands around them? I'll show you what I mean. I happen to have a larger deck of cards here. These are a little larger. So imagine I'm a small child with small ha hands. It's hard for me to reach my hands around that. See what I mean? What would I do? Well, same thing. I just turn them this way because they're narrower from here to here than they are from here to here. This is about the size of a regular deck of cards. See what I mean? It's not much bigger. So I would shuffle them like this. I would do the overhand shuffle, but instead of shuffling like this, I'd shuffle like this. So it doesn't matter how big the cards are, anybody should be able to do an overhand shuffle. Okay? I'm, I'm pulling up, you know, I'm cutting a little more than half with my right hand, pulling it up, dropping it down. So in other words, if I was using a regular deck, this is what it would look like. Okay, that's the overhand shuffle. The overhand shuffle from the inside would look like this. From the outside, from the side of the person watching, it would look like this. So for the overhand shuffle, you just put your hands out, lay the cards on, put your hands out and bend up the fingers. Lay the cards in, put your thumb on the top, you're pulling out about three quarters of the deck or more from the top and dropping and you drop successive packets. So from the side, this is what it looks like to the people who are watching you shuffle or Run, run some, run some off the top, and from the very top, it looks like this. Well, from the top and from the side. Okay, I hope you get that. 